Hey folks, I want to give one more example of this theorem, which states that the generators of Z mod NZ are the integers R from one up to N minus one that um, are relatively prime to N. So in other words, their greatest common divisor with N is equal to one. So let, let's do an example in the group uh, Z mod 10 Z. So in other words, I'm doing the, the case n equals 10. Alrighty, let's see what elements generate um, z mod 10 z. What's the cyclic subgroup generated by zero? Well, I add zero to itself a bunch of times, but I always get zero and nothing more. What's the cyclic subgroup generated by one? It's everything. I add one to its, uh, I start with one, add one to itself to get two, add one to itself to get three, et cetera. And then once I add one to nine, I get 10, which is zero mod 10. Cyclic subgroup generated by two, I start with two, add two to itself to get four, add two to get six, add two to get eight, add two to get 10, which is zero mod 10. Cyclic subgroup generated by three, start with three, at three to itself, we get six. At three to get nine. At three to get 12, which is two mod 10. At three to get five. At three to get eight. At three to get 11, which is one mod 10. At three to get four. At three to get seven. At three to get 10, which is zero. Okay, let's look at the cyclic subgroup generated by four. I start with four. Add four to get eight. Add four to get 12, which is two mod 10. Add four to get six. Add four to get 10, which is zero mod 10. Cyclic subgroup generated by five. Start with five. Add five will get to itself to get 10, which is zero mod 10. Cyclic subgroup generated by six. Start with six. Add six to get 12, which is two mod 10. Add six to get eight. Add six to get 14, which is four mod 10. And then add six to get 10, which is zero mod 10. This is a linguistic exercise. Cyclic subgroup generated by seven. Start with seven, add seven to get 14, add seven to get 11, add seven to get, um, <clears throat> well, add seven to four to get 11. <laughs> add seven to one to get eight, add seven to eight, to get 15, which is five mod 10. Add seven to get 12, which is two. Add seven to get nine. Add seven to get 16, which is six mod 10. Add seven to get 13 or three mod 10. And finally add seven to get 10, which is zero mod 10. Cyclic subgroup generated by eight. We have eight, 16, you know, 24, 32. <clears throat> um, add eight to two to get 10, which is zero. Last one, cyclic subgroup generated by nine. Um, we have nine plus nine is 18, you know, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81. And nine combines with itself 10 times is 90, which is equal to zero. So if you look through these, you'll see that one and three and seven and nine are the only elements that generated all of Z mod 10 Z. And that's just because in their cyclic subgroups, we got all 10 elements represented. The other elements, zero, two, four, five, six, and eight, they don't generate all of Z mod 10 Z. Their cyclic subgroups aren't all 10 elements. Now this theorem is saying, instead of doing all the work that I did on the left half, I could have known the answers ahead of time just by computing some greatest common divisors. So, we, know, we don't really ever talk about the greatest common divisor of, of zero in anything. And zero has been ruled out as a possible generator already. Okay, 
but <clears throat> let's compute the GCD of one and 10. So 10 here is my N and then one here is my R and I'm gonna vary R from one up to N minus one, from one up to nine. The greatest common divisor of one and 10 is only one. The greatest common divisor of two and 10 is two. Greatest common divisor of three and 10 is, is one, they're relatively prime. Greatest common, common divisor of four and 10 is two, two divide both. Greatest common divisor of five and 10 is equal to five. Greatest common divisor of six and 10, well, only two divides both. Greatest common divisor of seven and 10 is one, they're relatively prime. Greatest common divisor of eight and 10 is two. And lastly, the greatest common divisor of nine and 10 is one. Nothing besides one divides both nine and 10. So you'll notice that my generators, one, three, seven, and nine, are also the elements that are relatively prime to 10, that have the greatest common divisor of one. See that? And the intuition uh, maybe is becoming a little bit clearer. When something's relatively prime to 10, when you add it to itself a bunch of times, you hit every element in this group before you get back to the identity zero. By contrast, when you look at an element like five, five divides into 10. So you just add five to itself once and you get zero and therefore you can't generate anything else. You'll notice that many of these elements have a greatest common divisor of two of these even elements, okay? And it's, it's true that if the greatest common divisor is the same, nz mod nz, then the subgroup you generated is the same. So all of those elements that have the same greatest common divisor with 10, they also generate the same uh, subgroup in z mod 10z. And that's no accident. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this example explaining this theorem, which tells us what the generators of z mod nz are. They're all the elements from one up to n minus one that are relatively prime with n, or in other words, have no common divisors besides one. Thanks.